On today's episode of Watch JR Go, I bought a helicopter. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR Go, and a few videos ago you guys saw this gyrocopter right here in the back where I talked about it in one of the videos and we uh, ran the uh, old um, FAA ID there, tail number, and found out, you know, the last time it moved was like 2003 or 2008, one of the two. And anyway, it's a gyrocopter, engine was seized, and everybody wanted to see it. So I bought it today. I bought this helicopter for $500, and they loaned me this trailer to get the thing home. So today's adventure, we gotta figure out how to get that thing that has no tires onto this thing. And it probably weighs a little bit with the trailer. I assume the gyrocopter, very lightweight, but the whole setup, it's got some weight to it, it comes with its own trailer. So let's get this trailer on the trailer. Bearing up the tires on the trailer. This trailer's out. Hey, the tail moves that direction, just not the other direction. Yeah. We'll deal with that later. Good old tail flopping around. The pedals try to move it, but... All right, I'm gonna get the ramps out and we're gonna try to pull this thing onto here. All right, with a bunch of work, the gyrocopter is on the trailer, so we are about to head out of here, go and load it with the forklift, I guess. Just pulling my helicopter home. These are just normal things people do every day, right? <laughs> anyway, it's pretty fun. I can see all the cars around me taking pictures of it and people pointing out how it works from their cars behind me and stuff like that. So I think it was a good purchase so far. It seems like it's got good crowd engagement. Let's get this thing home, get the forklift out, pull it off the trailer, we're gonna return this trailer. And we're back. Darrell and I got the gyrocopter unloaded here. We had to get the forklift out. Obviously, unloading it was very tricky because the forks don't go all the way under, so I just counterbalanced it with my counterbalance. The other reason I had to buy this thing is because we had a bunch of lawn chairs in here, but one of them belonged to my brother, and he took it yesterday, and I thought, what better lawn chair than Okay, kind of kidding, but at the same time, we got another chair again. Anyway, this is a um, amateur built. It's a Benson Womack B8, serial number 001. No way. Data manufacturer 22869. The engine is, oh, okay, okay. It's 001 because the builder got to do their own serialization in case they built more than one. So I think this thing was registered as like a real brand, but it may have been registered as that. If you pull the tail number, it definitely comes right up. It's powered by a McCulloch. That's the Weed Eater brand. A, uh, oh no, AF model 001, model spec 318A. Anyway, a uh, little four cylinder McCulloch on there. It's definitely air cooled. You can see this. It looks like it has a magneto, which blows my mind. Take a look at these. You've got the spark plug wires that are like super protected on here with metal sheathing into the spark plugs. And then over here, that is where the magneto drive has to be. And what's this must be the fuel pump or something like that because it's running down here. So it either pressurizes, I bet that pressurizes the fuel tank on this thing. I don't know anything about it obviously, but hey, we are here to figure it out. Now the engine is of course fully seized. I knew that in the last video, I tried to give it a, I mean, the engine mounts are good. They flex a little bit. <laughs> so the prop is not gonna turn. <sighs> yeah, I better not put too much force on there. Control surfaces, they kind of work. Uh, I should mention that it's really cool how this works. It ducks the air through here and then pulls it back out of these ducts here. And the ducts are also the exhaust. So the exhaust probably creates like a little bit of uh, like vacuum, a little Venturi effect or something like that to help pull cool air across the cylinders when it's idling sitting still. When you're in the air, you're probably super good. Control surfaces, all the cables are pretty much intact. The old, uh, these like phenolic pulleys are falling apart as you would expect. So the tail on this is just controlled by the pedals. And I don't think you have like a cyclical or anything on a gyrocopter. I don't really know much about gyrocopters, but I know this is the throttle. That's all it is, it's nothing else. There's no like complex mechanism for that. And then this controls the swash plate. So, there we have our like side to side, our tilt on the rotor. And here we have up and down, probably literally translates to up and down. I just noticed there's a on off switch, which appears to be the actual on off switch for the engine. Cause obviously 
there's no power on this thing. Uh, it's not like it's like running a generator, it doesn't have any lights. Uh, there's no reason for it to have a real generator. So probably a magneto and some kind of vacuum pump running the fuel system. And then this to make break the magneto power there. I don't see where the wire, oh, this is the one wire into the magneto. Okay, and it, I hope that's a magneto, I don't know. But we're gonna figure that out together as we try to free this thing up, get the engine to turn again, and hopefully start it up, because I do want it to run. I don't think I'm ever gonna get on this thing, because I'm not a psychopath. Uh, I'm sure the gyrocopter enthusiasts will be upset that I said that, but I mean, we all know how a lot of gyrocopter um, flights end, not in a good way. So, very cool though, we've got a, these are like Hallmaster tires from Atwoods, basically. I looked them up, 4.8 by 4.0 by eight, and they're tube, and it should be super easy to get these tires. A lot of this is gonna clean up, although all this is aluminum, and needs recoated with that green aluminum uh, aircraft paint that is on all like bare skinned airplanes and stuff like that. Uh, the tank obviously probably red like a you know fuel tank should be like a boat fuel tank all that good stuff so that might need cleaned up but at the same time it looks like the seat flips forward to fuel it how do you fuel it so you you i guess you just have to unscrew this and pull it to the side it also has a fuel gauge which is very interesting it's at zero ah this must be bleed down i bet this is bleed down before you pull the cap off no way the gas tank is Oh, it smells, you know, delicious like varnished fuel, but look at the seal on the cap. The tank looks incredible inside. You can see the red paint on it now. There is nothing wrong in this tank. I don't see any rust. I need to get a better light in there, but like it still has fuel in it. You can sure see the red. That come across? Yeah, it sure does. Okay, so let's put this back. Looks like there's a fitting here that says ALR or air in. So it must pressurize its fuel tank to feed fuel back into the little carburetor here. We've got an attitude indicator here. We've got a compass right here, which is pretty funny. Uh, it's like just a ram mount basically for the compass. So you can just kind of set it where it needs to go. Get some bent up bracketry here that I'll get all bent back into place. And there's one other thing here. What does this do? I think this releases when you pull back on the swash plate, this pulls tight which makes me think it releases this little thing here so that you can be tied down until the last second or something like that and then take off. This seat's falling apart, easily fixed. This thing is experimental, so you can kind of do whatever you want as far as I know. Experimental is like, whatever happens to you, it's your fault, you know? It's not, it's not like an actual licensed FAA aircraft where everything has to be checked out by AP. There's no annuals. It's just something you built at your house. And if it works, it works, and if it doesn't, that's on you. So uh, we've got a lot of figuring out to do on this thing, but I think a lot of it, like the main parts of the aircraft are actually pretty solid. So I can't wait to get some tires on this because we need to be able to move it and we're gonna need wheels. So let's uh, measure our wheels. Also, this thing's bagged, check it out. If you look down in there, it has like semi airbags for the suspension and the hoses are shot. The hoses have rotted through, but you can see that you would like air it up and it would lift the trailer up a little bit and give you really, really nice suspension. We might need to change that to an actual spring because unfortunately, all these parts are probably gone, gone. Um, I'll pull the registration in a minute and we'll see when the last time this flew was. I did look at it once uh, when I made the last video where everybody said you should buy that. So let's measure the wheel lug pattern first. Well, look at that. 114.3 millimeter. That means we're putting GTR wheels on this tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna ruin my GTR wheels, but I'll get some uh, wheels off of Nissan or something like that, and we should be able to just get this right back on the road, at least so we can move it through the shop, and then we can start chasing down other problems. You can see we've got a little winch here to help pull the thing on. It's got a little wheel chalk for the front wheel, so you like pull it over and it helps lock the thing onto this homemade trailer. That is very nice, honestly. This is a folding homemade trailer the tongue flips down so you can stand it up in your garage and just kind of stash this thing away. Really cool, I love the trailer. Actually kind of the, the nicest part of the machine. But hey, this thing's all here except for our upper prop that's very missing, our upper rotor there. Uh, if you guys don't know anything about gyrocopters, I probably should have explained this from the beginning. Yes, it's a rotor, but it's not powered. This thing freewheels up here. So 
this thing will literally, we need to pull all the wires off of it, it just flops around. So to take off with a gyrocopter, you only have a pusher prop and you spin that thing up and you point it down a runway and it gets going like real fast, 60 something mile an hour probably, a sketchy mile an hour. And after that, the rotor just starts to turn. So you better hope the rotor takes off, otherwise you're in trouble. And it goes faster and faster and faster. And eventually the rotor goes fast enough that it creates some lift and you can helicopter up out of there. So the rotor is not driven, only the prop is driving your gyrocopter. So these, the whole thing's sketchy. Like there's nothing to keep you in the air if you make a bad decision, you're just hoping that you can auto rotate down if it comes down to it. So that's gyrocopters. I've always thought they were super interesting, but it'd be cool if we could start this thing. Here we go. We pulled this thing up on FlightAware. Obviously FlightAware is awesome. They keep all this data like forever. The last time this flew was 24 years ago from Lancaster CA to Bakersfield, California. Lancaster to Bakersfield, 31 minute flight. And we can see the, uh, it says it's a Piper Cherokee. That's not right. That's not right. Well, I can't find the FlightAware data on my phone. I'm not sure what's going on. If you guys find it, obviously N3913 Experimental, a Benson Wilkerson or something like that. You know, the guy's last name, Benson Womack. Oh, look at that. It even has, it says Wichita, Kansas, where it was built right on the chassis there uh, by that guy. So feel free to look that up. If you find it, post all the data in the comments about that last flight. I think it was 2008 or something like that. Although it looks like it's been a lot longer since it moved. Um, I think it may have just been like the registration renewal in 2008 or that's when it expired because like it clearly has been sitting for a very long time. So that is my gyrocopter. I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna restore it. Uh, obviously we're going to start with the trailer because I need to be able to move it around in here and then we'll clean up everything else and I will at the same time get the engine freed up because we need it to turn and we'll see just how bad that thing is. It should have those cylinder heads that just unbolt and you can have it all re-rung and put back together and uh, it should be simple. I don't need a certified engine, I don't need anything crazy, but I bet these parts are already hard to find because it is an aircraft engine. But hey, 500 bucks, smoking deal. I got a helicopter, my first helicopter, probably my last helicopter. And uh, I can't wait to hear this thing fire up one day. I hope you guys are on board for the journey because I bought it because you told me to. So. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop. Watch JRGo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. Well, tires. Wheels and tires are the main thing we need here because uh, it is just fully stuck. We have to put the jack under it just to move it. We're going to get it, though. This thing is so cool. He even had like a little ramp he built to guide the front wheel on because I'm sure he was like getting it on from the ground, like pulling it up while it was hooked up to the truck. So, you know, pretty ingenious little trailer just built for this. And all the aluminum looks great. This thing is really very complete. And if the gas tank is as good as I think it is, a quick rinse out and new fuel lines, like it's gonna start once we get the engine sorted. So obviously the air intake on this, I should have mentioned it's like right here and all the rain just goes in it. So it's full of water, I bet. Step one should probably be pulling the plugs and starting to soak it with uh, what everybody wants to see, evaporust.